the Melbourne Rebels. And Harry, we haven't heard a lot out of you. So would you like to take us through the significant ins and outs of the Rebels for 2023? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, they've, they've got a fair few. I mean, number one, we talked about him last pod. It's Monte Ioane, right? Like he has to be the biggest pick by a country mile. Uh, obviously, the Italian winger, um, Digby's nephew. Nephew. Nephew, right? Uh, has been not tearing up on the international stage. He's going to be an absolute weapon for them. I think he's he's going to be fire. So let, let's let's put him out first. He's clearly their top pickup. Uh, Sam Talakai, obviously, just been capped for the Wallabies. It adds some real depth at tight head for them now. Um, he's going to be competing pretty hard with Kobus Ilof and Pone Fa'amalsili. I don't know how you get those three all game time at tight head, to be honest, but it's uh, it's a good problem to have for them. You and then Alex... <laughs> yeah, but none of those guys are loose hits. Um, <laughs> Alex, Mar- I guess Pone was a number eight, mate. He can play anyway. Uh, Alex Murphy has come across, obviously, the hooker from the Reds. We thought he was the Reds' best hooker and has obviously had a few injury uh, injury interrupted seasons. So high hopes for him. They've also brought Anaru Rangi back to the side to try and get a little bit more depth in the side there as well. And then you've also got, um, what's his name? The uh, halfback, Ryan Lawrence, Ryan. has come over as well. So uh, old biceps, the uh, the crush of every every fan, every Rebels fan, just the so absolute mate. So hopefully when he's, saw- if he's not on the field, hopefully he was on the side of the field to bring back the fans to the Melbourne Rebels games. I mean, when you saw photos of him, it totally made sense that he must have been on steroids at one point because, jeez, his body is phenomenal. <laughs> his don't, arms don't are just insane. Don't put that out there. Don't put that out there. No, he got caught for it. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not breaking news. This was years ago. But, um, jeez, he's, uh, he's a fit man. Um, so if we go into the outs, the, the big one, obviously, is Matt Omua. Um, but there's been there's quite a few in this list as well. He was he was a player that I think we really wanted to see control the rebels, and we maybe didn't get enough out of him, um, which was a bit disappointing. But they also have lost Michael Wells, James Hansen, Joe Powell, Jarrell Skelton, someone that we had hoped to see a lot of um, in the future has gone across the league. You know, terrible choice, but we can't all make good choices. Um, they've also lost, uh, you know, a stalwart for them, Ross Haylett Petty, one that always left us a little bit scratching our heads, uh, how he's getting on so much. But he was someone that was there and always ready to, to work hard for them. Um, so they've lost a lot. Also, Sefa Agassi, Effie Ma'afu. So there's quite a few kind of guys that were in and around the squad, young Conor Mapia. Um, that are, are leaving, but the big ones, yeah, to more power wells. And look, is, does there have to be more to the story with Alex Murphy coming down to the Rebels? Because when, when you leave a Reds team where it seems like for all money it's your jersey, and you know, an awesome Reds team at that, like you feel like there's got to be more to the story there. Um, whether it's I think the relationship there was, there was with Brad some... Dawn or what, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a there was a report that one of I can't think of who it would be now, but one of his really good mates are down here um, at, at the Rebels, so that he was coming across to to spend time, you know, get get close to one of his mates. But I don't know who that is. Looking around the squad, I go, who was from the Reds that it could be? So, I mean, Tuttle, Saravi. Mm. I mean, no one really lines up. Maybe it is Tuttle. I don't know. Mm. Guys, I was just uh, just looking forward to some of the listener questions as well. And shout out to Ando. He's he's read our mind. His question was, will Lauren's instantly become the WAG's favourite in Super Rugby Pacific? And I can say firmly yes, without a doubt. Our wife doesn't know who he is yet, and I'm going to keep it that way as long as I can. Unless, <laughs> yes, I, unless I wanted to watch, then, I mean, genius. I mean, so yeah. we'll, put, we'll put Harry's home address in um, the show notes, and you can start um, sending photos uh, to uh, for his wife. <laughs> Stiff competition. No one going to need to ask his body, mate. That's, that's up there as well. Does he have the guns though? I don't know. It's um, but look, let's press on. Uh, let's take a look at the best fifteen we think uh, based on the Mel- the Rebel squad for twenty three. I'll start us off with a tight five. Um, loose head Matt Gibbon coming off um, some Wallabies caps, pretty huge. Um, Alex Murphy, we think uh, has got the uh, got the goods over 
uh, Rangi and uh, Jordan Ulisi. The we're no longer referring to him as the prince that's promised. He's he's had that title stripped. So the, the last time you hear, yeah, that. he's the prince that's got married to an American and left and made Hollywood. <laughs> I was going to say he's, he's definitely <laughs> from, like, from now on. He just doesn't want the attention anymore. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and then starting, I mean, look, it's toss a coin between Pone Farmasili and Kabus Ilof because um, they both <laughs> have just been immense last year. Um, like, it's hard to tell, but we're probably going to go with Pony as you're starting. But we, I think they'll share a lot of game time. And then, like we said, they've got the riches of Sam, Tal- the depth of Sam Talakai in there as well to um, to, to support there. Uh, and then the locks, they pick themselves pretty easily. We think Matt Phillip and uh, Trevor Hosea, which is a pretty formidable locking partnership, and that'll be good. Um, Can't wait to see more of Hosea, uh, you know, after missing a lot of last season, but being very promising in 2021 and a bit earlier. Yeah. Did you guys listen to the podcast uh, with the coach just talking about Trevor Hosea? He turned up after off-season training 2022, and they said he just passed his fitness testing, so they kicked him out of training. They just said, mate, you're better than that. If that's all you're going to do, then you're wasting your time. We expect a lot more from you. So that's why you didn't see him at the start of the season, because he basically flogged him and said, no, nah, you're, not, you're not good enough if that's all you're doing, just passing Last by. Year. Yeah, so he says he's kind of he's come back very, very strong. He's very fit, very big, crushing all his testing. Injured so, most last year. I thought he was injured all last year. No? Not at the start of the season, mate. That's oh. what I was saying. They kicked him out of training. Oh, so yeah. he's got his body right, and he's he's yeah. back, mate. We're going to see what we Excellent. wanted last year from Trevor Hosea. Yeah, he, he yeah needed, I was I was looking for him to put on a few more kilos as well because he was uh, he he has that menace about him. He just needed to back it up with a few more kegs to be absolutely yeah. destructive. So yeah. that should be good. Um, now, speaking so of Rob, destructive players, do you want to take us through the back row? Yeah, jumping in for us, we've got Rob Leota at six. He is a destructive man as well in that number six jersey. Uh, Brad Wilkin uh, really evolved last year after having quite a few injury disrupted years, and I think he's going to be really pivotal for them this season. Tamati Iwani, who broke onto the scene in 2022, just want to see more of him. You know, like he he, he kind of exploded into the scene, faded away a little bit. Um, kind of came in and out, but he is a, a very, very physical man. And if he's starting at that number eight jersey, geez, I'd be worried if I was on the other side. Does, does the fact that the Rebels now have two starting Yuanis uh, that are awesome, just like, you know, by nature, make them the dark horse of the Aussie conference or what? Like, what's the... It, it definitely helps. Um, and then we go across to the halves. We've gone with James Tuttle. Um, there is some contention. We can talk about it a little bit later, I, I think, uh, at who will be the number nine with cohesion and different things. But him pay, partnering up with Carter Gordon in the number 10 jersey is the way we see it. And just let Carter Gordon play, boys. Just let the man play. Just let the man have the jersey. Exactly. I love that there was some contest about James Tuttle starting when we were debating this. He won the Players' Player of the Year. So, well, like, we, no, it's not because we we all thought he was the clear best. But the issue was they were talking about cohesion. This was you that brought it up, and Carter Gordon was playing alongside was it Sarovi? Um, in no, the no, that, was, that was that was well after. I think that was a very good. Uh, yeah, no, Tony totally is well clearly the, talk the best for me. Uh, yeah. All right, excellent. Up, we're getting us back on interest. track. Uh, Harry, do you want to take us through the the back split? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I still have no idea who's going to play centers for them, to be completely honest. We've gone for what was their first choice last year when their red cards weren't stopping it from happening. So you got Ray, the red card, Nu'u. Uh, I, I believe he's one red card away from being kicked out of the entire side. And I mean that as a fan of Nu'u, I thought he was very good at inside center before he got so you, all those So times. you really want to make it worth it when you go for it, you know what I mean? Just Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, this is career on the line for him. I mean it. He's, uh, he's a good player, but... Jesus Christ. Uh, Stacey Ely, we have it outside centre, obviously international player, um, pretty well established, pretty experienced now. There's a lot of young guys that are going to be pushing for that jersey, but I think they're probably the established two that you think if you're going to go status quo, continue to build the combinations, that makes the most sense. Then I've got Monty Yuani on the left wing. You guys happy for me to pick him? Really happy with uh, that. I mean, look, he's got some big shoes to fill, uh, but pretty, pretty happy on that. He's, he'll do all right, I reckon. <laughs> Andrew Kellaway at 14 and Reese Hodge at 15. I know that there's obviously going to be some uh, some competition there that Kellaway might get some time at 15 and you shift Hodge somewhere else. I don't I don't dislike putting Hodge at 13, Kellaway to 15 and then getting like Ripley or something like that under the wing, but I don't think that's what they'll do. I think they'll try and stick to what they've played the most consistently. You know, there's been a lot of cohesion chat with them. Uh, the bench, fellas, have you talked about that? 
No, we haven't. Um, but yeah, for the forwards, look, Cameron Orr is a shoe in for for loose head, and he will compete with with Matt Gibbon for game time. Um, Rangi uh, or Ulysses um, for bench hooker, and then uh, Elof, uh, like we said, the combo of Elof or Pone. Um, and then there's uh, not only Sam Talakai, there's also still Reese Van Neck, who um, has also been very good. But so lots of depth at tight head there. Um, and Nelson, the Aussie like props, mate. Australia's yeah, prop mate, they got some prop stocks. So bloody good at the moment. It, and right. we're sending half of them over to New Zealand, filling the All Blacks too. So we're doing pretty good. Um, we've got uh, Josh Cannon as our lock on the bench with Josh Kemeny. Look. We've got him slash with Richard Hardwick. Dickie Hardwick has done a lot for this team and been in and out. And, and look, he got some Wallaby caps early on. He has had good moments in recent years. But Josh Kemeny had a breakout, I think it was 2021, before being injured through through most of the last year. And he's an exciting player, mainly covering six, cover seven. Um, so I, I hope we're seeing a lot of him. So he's sitting there in the bench back row spot for us, followed by Ryan Lowens, uh, the bicep triceps man himself he's going to be ripping balls into the far wing i think from the far right he's thrown to the far left on the chest like that's what his arms are made I for didn't sure know that's where you're going with that the chest. dramatic pause there yeah true <laughs> <laughs> ripping balls um and, and harry was, and who, yeah. who and, and to finish guys we've got glenn vahu and lucas ripley two exciting players that made their debuts last year uh, I, I was really impressed by them, to be honest. I think they'll both get starting time as well. Vahu, I don't know if he's going to end up somewhere in the centres or on the outer wing. And same question, really, for Ripley. So some really good opportunity there for those two to try and establish themselves. And really, it wouldn't surprise me if, if either or both of those guys are in the starting 23 by the end of the year. For sure. Yeah. All right, well, that takes us into the key questions facing the Melbourne Rebels 2023 or the Melbourne slash Cohesion Rebels 2023. Hmm. Um, TMI. Yeah, TMI. TWI, TWI. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, can the halves pairing stack up at super level? Harry? Tuttle and Gordon. Uh, short answer, no. <laughs> Jeez, I know it's not what Rebels fans want me to say, and I think I might be turning a few people off here, but I think James Tuttle is very good. I think he's he's another year in the in the saddle. Um, obviously, he kind of established, established himself over the top of Joe Powell last year, and that was very impressive to see him come back after that repeat Achilles rupture. Um, he's got all the skills. He can kick goals. He reads the game well. I'm not sure if he's quite as quick as what he used to be, but I think he can do a pretty good role just steering the ship around. And you think they're Competition is the likes of Nick White, Aaron Smith, Jake Gordon. Like there's some freakish, freakish talents that he's competing against. Carter Gordon, again, young guy, now had a couple of seasons in Super Rugby, kind of got thrown in the deep end early last year, and then it just got they just backtracked way too much, really really took him away from the limelight and then just kind of hoped that he would develop in the background, I think, while Tuamua steered the ship around. So, you know, it's it's now, uh, I guess, uh, sink or swim for Carter Gordon. He's going to have a pretty solid forward pack in front of him and hopefully some decent service from Tuttle. But, geez, he's got all the talent. I'm, I'm just not 100% convinced he can be consistently solid at this, at this level. And I think that's the biggest question. At their best, both Tuttle and Gordon can be really solid. Can they match it week in, week out with the best sides? I'm not so sure. I just need the Tim Horan introduction uh, about Carter Gordon every week, uh, every game. It's Tim, Timmy Horan just to talk him up to the, to the high heavens. Um, you know, it's going to be a Wallabies 10, like isn't he? Pasatoa, the Pasatoa chat after <laughs> round one or two. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> definitely in the Wallabies squad. Very Guys, true. Nelson, do you have Rebels any... Santa Combo? Nelson, I've, I've given a few of my thoughts. Who do you think is going to start the season and who's going to finish the season if they're all fit? Look, I think we're definitely going Ray Nuu and Stacey Illy. I've chucked an extra L in there for free for Illy. There's only one in there. But um, that's that's how it's going to start out. Um, Illy, I, Illy was quite promising last year. He is getting on a little bit. It depends if they're going to look to try to start building um, a future, you know, back line through their squad. Carter Gordon, you know, as their 10. If they're sticking with him, maybe it is time to give someone like Glenn Vaihu a centre spot or Lucas Ripley. Um, Ray Nuu, is he going to red card himself into an abyss this season? It's when, hard to when. know, but it's, it's, oh, when. Uh, it's, 
when, when will he regard, cut himself into an abyss? Uh, I, I think at least one, my opinion is at least one of Ben Vaihu or Lucas Ripley. For me, it's probably Vaihu is going to be in the centres by the, at the end of the year. Um, I think Glenn Vaihu as a 12 um, is is a very exciting young player coming through. But also, I mean, <laughs> Lucas Ripley can cover wings and, and centres as well. But for me, I think Glenn Vaihu is probably the utility type 12 that will fill a role for them when Ray Nuu gets red nude. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Um, I will be, uh, conversely to you, I think Lucas Ripley is your man um, who's your, your, your phenom that you want to get into that 13 jersey. Um, we had, he had a game or two where he had an absolute Barry Crocker and we shut all over him. Um, but then he had that game where he scored three tries, um, or, or four tries. I can't remember. Um, but I think, uh, he's just an absolute youngster with, you know, so much room to grow. Um, and very exciting. So I, I think it's, it's when Ray who gets his red card, gets sent off, what do they do? And, um, it's, you know, do you move, um, do you move, uh, Illy into 12? Cause he's played 12 for Samoa as well and things like that. Um, and give Lucas Ripley a go at 13, or do you move Hodge? It kind of depends how they want to use Hodge. Um, you move Hodge in, for that matter. No, you move no. Hodge in. Stop, stop fucking with Kellaway. Kellaway is not a centre. No, 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 I didn't say Kellaway. No, I said, do you move, no, no. You move Illy into 12 and you oh. put Ripley in at 13? Can you, I, was, I was having a go at Harry. He said, I'm, uh, I'm Kellaway. Not, I'm not Kellaway sure that they say it like that way. That's all. I think Kellaway might be maybe a little bit stern up this year and say, guys, leave me out in the outside backs. Yeah. I want to be Kellaway full starting back. Wallaby's team. Yeah, but I'm definitely. I'm with, a lot of outside last year. I know. I'm with. I'm with. I think we're all on the same page there. None of us. No one wants to see Callaway playing 13. Callaway doesn't want to play 13. Don't put him in 13. Okay. Yeah. Very simple. Um. So yeah. No. I think we've. I think we've nailed that question. Uh. And then <laughs> <laughs> moving on to, um. How many of the Rebels' young guns will make a starting spot their own in 2023? I mean, I guess we kind of just talked about that again. But um. It's, it's those guys we've talked about. Literally, it's Vaihu, Ripley. You know, they're fighting it out. Um, they're probably it, you know. Carter exactly. Gordon, Jose is a young gun, but I mean, that's locked in as well. Like, I, th- I think Canham's a chance if Jose doesn't come through. You know, we talked up the hype of him being physically better, but I thought Canham was pretty solid last year in a losing side. I thought he was pretty impressive. And then the other one I want to say is I don't know if he still counts as a young gun, he hasn't been around that long. But Josh Kennedy coming back from injury, I'm excited to see him go around. I think that he has the potential to force his way into that back row maybe above to Marty Ioani if he's playing his best footy as well. He's just, yeah. he's a think, very good player. I think there is question marks on Tamani Ioani. Can he do it all season? Is he going to be consistent there? So I think that's a pretty good shout. I'll answer it. Yes, he can. And leave him starting, please. Um, so, <laughs> um, no, and look, and a great, another listener question, Mitch from the Pick and Drive, will the Rebels beat any New Zealand sides this year? Can we uh, rephrase Nelson? that question? Will any New Zealand side beat the Rebels this year? All right. Well, yes. if you answer it that way, yes, I'm prepared to answer that one with a big yes. Um, but back to the original question: Will the Rebels beat any New Zealand sides this year, Nelson? No. Harry, does Moana Pacific account? They do. No. Will Cameron? No. No. <laughs> Savage. Savage. No, look, I, I genuinely think that they, uh, they've, they've got a pretty good fifteen. A couple of question marks in there, but I'm, I'm worried about their depth from the second row back. I, I'm just not really sure they have enough experience. I, I think they're going to struggle a little bit. The same as the Western Force. The, the thing that helps them is that you know this year finally we're getting the crossover matches early and throughout the season. It's not injure all your players in the first half of the season against the Aussies and then bring on your third string Rebels against the Kiwis. So maybe that's something that gives them a little bit more help early on if they well, just, if we're worried about their depth. Just to keep some listeners in um, in the second best city in Australia, um, I'll say yes, the Rebels will get a win um, in twenty twenty. Who against? Islanders. Like, I'm not going to say who, just that they might get a win and um, could be minor. Oh, they might Burns, mate. Oh, Freddie Burns. I'm not beating them. Yeah, mate. Where's the cohesion? All right. Well, let's let's push on. Stocks are rising. Again, we've talked about all these players, but look, Tamati Iwani, stocks are rising, boys. Starting at eight, give the man some game time. Surely he's just going to absolutely crush everyone in the competition and um, yeah. it's going to be great. Yeah, look, I think the big thing is if he's just got his body right. He was a big unit and damaging last year, but he could play about 15 minutes of footy. So if he's fitter, then, yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's definitely worthwhile. The one I had was uh, Carter Gordon. I think, you know, it, it's his 
his share <clears> to steer. I said that he can be brilliant in patches. If, if he can try and get that consistency down pat, I think he's going to be brilliant. But either way, I think the jersey will be his. I think that the back might that, be uh, Nick Juiced. And uh, look, I I think, again, another young player with a with a potential to really make a step forward, but I think it's Gordon's jersey and he's got all season to make it work. Yep. Nels, yeah. I, would, uh, I would allow you to talk about Brad Wilkins stocks are rising, but we don't have another 20 minutes to spare. Um, we know he was awesome last year and he's Brad Wilkins. He's only getting better. Uh, he is again. He can't <laughs> rise more than last year, man. That was and, a big step forward. And, and speaking he of can, people who can't he rise will. further, someone put Monty Iwani in here and then we've corrected them to say um he's not rising, mate. He's already risen. He's an international yeah, player. I, I, think Harry, him, so. I, I think Harry put him in and I'm like, do not pick him. That's good. I, I, look, I was going to let someone get away with the blame here, but Nelson, I'm glad you pointed them out. Um, and stocks are falling. Um, we've got Kabos Elof in here. Um, and what we're a saying, year he had. That's why. Because he just had the best 2022. Yeah. He was True, like I, a I, fan favourite, mate. He was yeah, he I, was an adopted burn boy. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, pretty hard to replicate that, to be fair. And if there is a fit Pone in there in, in, in waiting, um, who's, had a, who's, who's had a taste of the Wallaby squad as well. And Talakai. Um, uh, and yeah, it is. You can't say anything, but his stocks have probably got to fall. So. But but the other thing is, I think Kovas Ilof is eligible for the Wallabies this year. So maybe he just keeps turning it on. He's going. And he's going he just up. ends up as the backup tight head for the Wallabies. True, but he. I'm I'm looking forward to another few of his his big run ups and um and some barging over some tries and um him losing his shorts and seeing the pink yeah, budgies again. Right, you know, pink budgies. It's gonna be good. So, um, any any other ones? Stocks are falling. Oh look, uh, in the same category, it's Taylor guys. I know the the guys made his Wallabies debut last year, and I'm not sure he's in the 23, and and that's a that's a pretty big fall for me, even though it's his first you know first year back in the the Rebels. I wouldn't be sure he's above. Um, Pony and Cobos Il, Cobos Ilof. So mm. it's, it's a four for me. It's got to be a four unless he's somehow starting every single game. And I just don't see it. If only he went back to the Reds back home, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and Harry, you got anyone else to round us out? Uh, you got U- Ulessi? No, we haven't said him yet. No, we have not. No. Yeah, good. I, I look to start with, he was always going to be falling when you got Alex Murphy coming in and I think we all know the potential that he has the prince that was promised we've, we've changed him to Prince Harry so you know obviously we've lost a bit of faith but on top of that you know there's a there was a good chat between Michael Atkinson um, hashtag Echo Knows and Jason Sherman on uh, on Twitter on one of Is our Sherman, threads hashtag about the Reds. Or, or can we start that or just the Shermanator <laughs> yeah we can start that the Shermanator and they were just talking about a young hooker in the Reds Academy Ethan Dobbins who's 22 years old he's kind of on the extended list there but he at Wests apparently actually forced Ulessi to the bench and started over him at the back end of the West season. So knowing wow. that, mate, Harry has left for New York. Prince Harry's gone, mate. He's left the royal family. They will not let him back in. I think his stocks are going to be plummeting this is, year. Is that because he had another yeah. seven injuries in one game or something? You know what I mean? Like It's it's very possible, let's be honest. But look, Dobbins, if uh, if you're getting done by Dobbins, I, I know he's very good as a 22-year-old, but that's a, that's a big fall. Yep, absolutely fair. And look, to round us out, the Smokies. Um, we've talked a lot about him, or and I certainly hyped him right up um, after Nelson was talking about Vaihu. Lucas Ripley, I think, could be the big Smoky of the year. I think we perhaps said he was a bit of a Smoky last year as well. But um, mm-hmm. I just think, look, he's he's your young gun that you want to get out there, you know, after you want to get some minutes off the bench. And if Kellaway or Monte Iwani, God forbid, gets injured, um, or one of your centers goes, or oh, sorry, when the red card happens as well, um, you, you you want to bring him in there at 13 or on the wing. I think he's really exciting. I'm not sure we said anything positive about Ripley in the first half of last season, to be honest. I think we, we were incredibly not. harsh for a young man trying to do his best. But sometime soon, early in this season, one of the commentators are going to say, Lucas, Lucas Ripley, believe it or not, when he does something amazing. And I'm hanging out for that. I, I'm waiting for it. Smooth. Look, I've, I've got one I'll throw in there. It's absolute smoky. Hilakena Vundongu. Rudongu. Yeah. Um, yep. he's Crushed a, it. Yeah, he's a, an absolute smoky, but he's an exciting electric winger. It, whether he even gets a chance in this back line, who knows? Probably not. But if he does, he can, he can be electric. 
I mean, let's not forget that Lockie Anderson is back from injury this year as well after making one of the wing spots he's owned a couple of years ago. So there's a lot of competition there. But hey, mate, wouldn't Dongo hopefully he comes through? Now, there's also Joe Pincus. Yeah, 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 there is. Rather the other you're, Pincus. you're not wrong. Yeah. No, thank you for those. But hopefully, if, look, if Lockie Anderson is um, is listed as a uh, back rower again and I can think of him up in fantasy as a winger, then, you know, I'll be all about it. It's fine. I'll give it a go. Um, all right. Well, that rounds out the Melbourne Rebels.